What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and this is gonna be my first impression on the Ashen Wolves banner and if we should be pulling on this banner or not and my opinion on these units. So the first unit that we have is gonna be Yuri, so he's finally in the game. I'm really happy about Ashen Wolves representation, so he is an infantry dagger unit and keep in mind that we are in Gen 6, so we can see his stats here and um, yeah, he has got really high speed at base 43 amazing base 39 attack which yeah he was not that strong in three houses uh in terms of his attack stat so here we can see the foul play in the action and he has got honorable blade as his preferred weapon it gives him canto 2 which is really unique infantry units don't really have this kind of thing uh with trace skills and canto usually he also gets minus one special cooldown from this weapon, which means that Time Pulse makes Glimmer, Moonbow, Ruptured Sky into a pre-charged special at start of every turn. And at start of turn, he can also move one extra space. So we have seen this before in Brave Arms Weapon Refine recently, and Yuri also gets that, so he's essentially like a Dagger Cavalier without the disadvantage of being a cavalry unit. He is not really stopped by trenches, he doesn't have the cavalry uh, effectiveness on him, and he can also have access to the infantry skills. So this is amazing, and it's very consistent, and at start of combat, if the foe is above half health, he can get plus 6 attack and speed during the combat, and then he has got the standard Dagger debuff. So this is a really nice weapon that complements his foul play and his playstyle overall by assisting hit and run plays or just aggressive plays. And then he has got foul play as his assist skill. Now I'm not really too sure if this is going to be a preferred skill or not because in three houses this is the mastery skill of trickster class. So it's not like it's only available to Yuri. Previously we did have, you know, Ruptured Sky available on Byleth and that was only available to Byleth in three houses but in Heroes anyone can inherit that um, so I'm not really too sure how foul play is going to be changing up things but basically this has got three ranges and it is like a super swap in my opinion and with the Kanto that allows you to hit and run and this opens up some really really insane plays aggressive insane plays in the player phase because you can run disarm trap on him for ether raids you can basically swap places with a unit who's going to be in the range of the enemy and then retreat with Kanto and also test the traps with Kanto and while you're retreating. So this is just really amazing with the combination of fall play and Kanto. Even if this is inheritable, um, I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be restricted to infantry units. Um, still like Yuri has got Kanto built into his weapon which is just amazing so that he can retreat after that. And this is going to be opening up like a can of worms for ether raids with safety fence for the people who use hit and run and gale force plays because you can just have a unit in the front lines by using Yuri or you can just retreat your ally with Yuri and also test the traps with disarm trap. So I'm actually really excited for him and I hope I can get him. I'm not really going to be spending too too many orbs with my free to play account but like with my play style with hit and run, the aggressive plays. I really love what Yuri brings to the table and he's going to be an extremely unique unit uh, because of that. Also the extra movement is just really insane uh, for this kind of infantry unit. He also has Sea Duel Infantry 4 and Time Pulse. So I'm going to be making a separate video on Sea Duel Infantry 4. I have completed that video but didn't really get the time to record it so I'll do it tomorrow and Time Pulse is really good. So Sea Duel Infantry 4 is really funny on Yuri because he literally has 177 BST. So after he gets one merge, Sea Duel Infantry is just worthless for him. Uh, it's just a dead weight. So I really find that hilarious that they are releasing this kind of dual skill on a unit who doesn't even need it after the first merge. He also has Time Pulse, um, which is really great with his weapon. And he's going to be using his Glimmer here. So we already know their stats because they are shown here. So Foul Play is just really, really amazing. It's super unique. Nothing really we have seen this before. And Kanto on this kind of unit with 3 movement is just going to be making him standing out from all of the other infantry dagger units and dagger units in general. So I think that he's going to be the star of the banner and he's pretty much like going to be the top pick for sparking in my opinion. So Yuri in my opinion carries this banner super hard even though like Muspel is on the thumbnail of the trailer. Still I feel like Yuri just carries this banner. We also have uh, Constance here, so we do know her stats as well and she's basically a red mage flyer and she's gonna be playing like duo pilot. She's got Agnes arrow and this gives her plus 3 speed 
and this weapon is always going to be active in the player phase and in the enemy phase it's only active when she's within two spaces of an ally. This weapon can give her plus 6 attack and speed during the combat and it also has the partial null follow up built into it and this means that she can run wind sweep just to uh, negate any kind of follow up negation and just double those kinds of units. She also gets two effects depending on odd or even turns. So on the odd turns, she can ignore the visible buffs to foes, speed and resistance. And on the even turns, she can neutralize the penalties on her attack and speed. This is a really nice reference and implementation of her personality of how Constance is when she's indoors and how she is when she is out in the sun. So I really love this kind of implementation on her weapon, really creative. So this allows her to be a super strong unit because she can run wind sweep even though she comes with far trace wind sweep is going to be the option and she has got amazing offensive stats spread 42 base attack and 40 base speed. These are likely going to be having some kind of super boon in either or or even both. She doesn't really have any kind of bulk but she doesn't really need to have it. She's got amazing top tier base kit with attack speed push 4 attack speed far trace and speed resistance rain so having this kind of far trace skill present in the normal summoning pool is amazing and you can also get this with sparking so she's gonna be playing out like a duo pilot essentially gonna be a top tier uh red flying mage with this kind of base kit and uh her of course weapon which uh, is really good just have to keep the track of odd and even turns just to make sure that you can get the effects so here we can see her stats again and she's going to be retreating. So really happy about Fortress and the implementation of her weapon. And then we move on to Happy. So she is a blue mage cavalier. Which is of course really competitive because of Reinhardt and also Selina. But I feel like Happy can kind of just stand out a bit because of her demonic tome. So this is a preferred weapon effective on dragon units and beast units. And it is going to be relevant because Fallen Edelgard is the best beast unit in the game. So she gets minus one special cooldown with this weapon and it also has time pulse built into it. So cavalry units cannot have access to time pulse which means that she can have a pre-charge glimmer without any kind of external help and she gets plus six attack and speed during the combat if she's above 25% HP. So she can function similarly to a legendary Lelina and even her stat spread is kind of similar. High attack stat and high resistance stat and she doesn't really have a lot of speed or defense. So she kind of functions like Legendary Lelina, hitting extremely hard and focusing on one-shotting opponents. So this could be made possible by running Glimmer or Moonbow or Ruptured Sky or just have a Pent that can make her charge Iceberg or you could just run Quick and Pulse. So having Pre-Charge Special as a cavalry unit is basically going to be the niche of uh, Happy. But her playstyle is pretty much that she's either going to kill the unit that she's going to be attacking or she's going to die herself because of her low speed. I feel like Legend Lilina does this kind of role a bit better because of Gifted Magic being an AoE special um, and how her weapon functions essentially. But still she's going to be Seasonal Lock and Happy is like flexible with the blessings. So Happy can be used in that kind of way. Uh, but like I said, there's competition in Selina and Reinhardt. Doesn't really mean that Happy is bad or anything like that. She's definitely pretty strong with that insanely high base 42 attack, which is likely going to have a super boon in it. So yeah, basically focusing on one shots which is not bad with her kind of attack stat. She's got attack rest, catch, and ER far trace. Even though she's got effective damage, I've got my doubts about if she can even one-shot a Fallen Edelgard because the thing is that Fallen Edelgard gets the damage reduction and she has nothing in her base kit that can negate that. So she's going to be hitting Fallen Edelgard for a lot of damage, like a lot. She's going to be able to chunk her really hard, but not really too sure if she can really kill Fallen Edelgard from full HP. Uh, with this kind of effective damage and a pre-charged special. This is of course going to be making it a bit annoying for a lot of the dragons as well uh, who are going to be used as a tank because Happy can hit extremely, extremely hard. Yeah, we have seen the stats of her here. So the next unit is going to be Muspelt, the unit that we face in Tempest Trial. And he is a red dragon cavalry unit, pretty unique in itself. So we have got a Niffle and now we have got Muspel, finally. So I feel like he's going to be having stat spread similar to this. He was an enemy unit and this was his base stats as an enemy unit if he just took out the inflation. And he does have his growth rates and everything uh, in the data mine or I guess in the data. So this is going to be his stats I think um, because he makes use of Dragon Wall and for that you need the bulk. So he's pretty min max in terms of bulk for a dragon. 
and he's got 40 defense probably and 35 resistance it's gonna be somewhere around this he's got flame lake breath as his weapon this is a 19 might weapon essentially and uh, this also gives him plus 5 to all of his stats with pretty easy condition and this has got fatal smoke built into it so similar to how Niffle has got flash status built into her weapon uh, Muspel has got fatal smoke but I would say that this is a better fatal smoke because Fatal Smoke will only apply Deep Wounds effect if the unit survives. But here, Muspel does not need to survive the combat because it says that if the unit attacked, then it inflicts the status. So Muspel could die and he would still inflict the Fatal Smoke effect, which is definitely something unique and better than Fatal Smoke itself. He has got Rally Up Attack plus ARD Defense Res, even though I feel like he probably wants like extra attack for his Slotsy skill. Then he's got Dragon Wall, which is going to be pretty nice with his high resistance. And then we've got Domain of Flame, which has got Joint Drive Attack and Joint Drive Defense built into it. And this kind of drive true damage built into it as well. So it can provide the true damage on your first attack, depending on the attack of your unit and the resistance of the foe. So it compares the two stats and it deals true damage based on 30% of the difference between unit's attack stat and foe's resistance. And allies within two spaces can also utilize this kind of effect. Um, so this is extremely good giving the true damage to allies and himself. This is much more unique than Domain of Ice in my opinion because we have had Flane who can provide that kind of damage reduction. But we don't really have anything that can provide this kind of true damage to the allies with Domain of Flame. So definitely going to be a pretty powerful unit for Aether Raid's defense. Uh, but Red Color is pretty competitive for Duo Liv, Legendary Sigurd, uh, Duo Sigurd, Legendary Lilina. So Red is kind of competitive, but still he can fit in many teams as a melee cavalier. And inflicting Fatal Smoke on units even against when he's going to be dying up against them, like Brave Hector for example, he can still inflict them with the Fatal Smoke effect. And he can also just give the allies this kind of true damage. So that can make the allies extremely powerful, especially when they're coupled with someone like Bright Catria. So the thing which you have to keep in mind with Muspel is that you need to keep him near his allies. And in the AI's hands and Aether Raid's defense especially, that's going to be a bit hard because he's a cavalry unit. So you most likely need to have him in the back line or have him with some kind of Bright Catria team. Um, so that is going to be Muspel, definitely going to be a pretty unique unit because of Domain of Flame. He doesn't have an auto follow up which can hold him back as a slow unit but he's basically really tanky and that's pretty much his whole thing and he can do a lot of damage in a single attack because of Domain of Flame. So that is the Three Houses Ash and Wolves banner. I'm pretty excited for this especially for Yuri. And here we see Balthus. Uh, he's gonna be an instant demote unit. He is not gonna be a 4 star focus or anything like that. He's kind of similar to Benny I guess or Tatiana. And he doesn't even have some kind of preferred weapon. He's an axe unit. Yeah, king of grappling <laughs> with an axe. Not even that. The disrespect. He didn't even have any kind of preferred weapon. Um, yeah, this is an instant axe if you take a look at the sprite carefully. And he probably has brazen attack defense because he's damaged here. And he's got plus 11 attack and defense. So probably has that. Super underwhelming in terms of how he was, you know, made. My boy definitely got shafted here, which is really sad, but he's going to be a Gen 6 Axe Infantry unit, so he's going to be having better scoring than Ninja Hana or Kalik, just more BSD than them. I pretty much see him being this kind of faster Kalik, to be honest, uh, with his base stats, but we'll have to see. So yeah, Red Balthus definitely got shafted there. Um, this banner doesn't have any kind of force or focus, actually. We're also going to be having Alfric as the Grand Tour Battle unit. Um, if you have played Ash and Wolves, you might be familiar with him. Probably gonna be a red mage again because he uses fire magic. So we just got Peleus and again Elfric is gonna be this red mage because we have seen a sprite in Gatekeeper's attack animation. So really high chances of him being some kind of red mage but I'm hoping, I'm just hoping he gets some kind of preferred weapon because uh, yeah we just have just too many red mages from Grand Hero Battles. So that is, uh, that is my opinion on this banner. I feel like Yuri is the topmost priority for sparking. And after that, it really depends on what kind of fodder you want. If you want the fodder skill, then Constance and Happy are your go-to pick. And Constance is also really good as a red mage flyer. Happy has that one-shot potential, but if you have built up 
a like a plus in Reinhardt or something like that, you might have less incentive to go after Happy. And Mospel is unique as a red cavalry dragon, but his main application is going to be in 8th rate's defense. So it really depends on your playstyle and preferences in your game modes. Um, but generally speaking, I feel like Yuri is the strongest, um, you know, spark pick. But keep in mind that we're going to be getting uh, the mythic banner at the end of this month. So that's something that many people are going to be looking forward to. So yeah, that is going to be my opinion on the Ashen Wolves banner. Let me know what you think about this banner in the comment section down below. I'll be eager to hear that. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. And if you want to support me directly, then you can do that by using super thanks or by becoming a member of the channel down below. And I want to thank all of my YouTube members for the constant support. If you want to see more Fire Mom Heroes videos, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as uh, Balthus's preferred weapon or even having gauntlets. So that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.